Hey everyone, this is Derek here, and I think we're going to have to do three videos today because there's just so much happening in the PUBG Mobile world, and I want to keep you guys up to date the best I can. So, there are three versions of PUBG Mobile out in the wild right now. There's 0.6.1, which is the current global version as of the time of filming this. There's also the newer 0.7.0 global beta, which was just released a couple days ago. It brings some interesting changes, new weapons, new grips, and a whole lot more. Then we have the newest release, 0.8.6 which is the Chinese update, the light speed Chinese update. And this isn't even covering TIMI Studios, the other studio that's also making a Chinese version of PUBG Mobile. If you want me to cover anything uh, for that version, just let me know in the comments down below. However, I'm worried that I won't have the time to cover everything. So we might just stick to light speed for now. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about what's new in PUBG Mobile 0.8.6, which was just released about 12 hours ago or so now. We're also going to talk about when it's coming to the global stage, as well as what happened to the 0.7.0 global update and when we can expect that too. And for these patch notes, a big thanks to Weibo, who posted this over on the Reddit, and I use that as the basis for this video. So a huge thank you to Weibo for translating the patch notes and getting them out here to help the community out. And if you enjoy PUBG Mobile, if you enjoy watching PUBG Mobile content, definitely subscribe to this channel because I'll be posting a ton more of it on all of these crazy versions of the game which are being released and all this just insanity to keep you guys up to date with. So what about the global update to 0.7.0? We don't know if that's for sure what it's going to be called, but can guess that that's most likely because that's what the beta is named. The estimated date is the 16th of July, which is a Monday. Now this could get pushed forward or backwards depending on how well the beta works and how well they do squishing any bugs that arise in the beta because right now there are quite a few of them. However, July 16th should be pretty close to when the update is released, so definitely mark your calendars down. That is currently uh, about two weeks away or so from now, right? A little over two weeks. So it brings a ton of new features and improvements just like every other update. Obviously this update doesn't bring a new map, but it does bring exciting things like new three and six times scopes, the new SLR 762 designated marksman rifle, which is a beast, new skins for cars, bikes, boats, packbacks, and helmets, which we don't know entirely how that's going to work yet, but I'm excited about it. We also have new grips. I'll be making videos on most of these topics. I already made a video, I'll link it in the description down below if I remember to all the changes, like an overview of like the 20 plus changes on this beta. But I'll also be making videos in the coming days going more into depth in each of these. I'd like to do a video just on the scopes, a video just on the SLR because I think they deserve it and there's enough new content there to get excited about and show you guys exactly what's in that change. So we also have War Mode, which I'll be posting some gameplay of. I played it last night and enjoyed it immensely. It's a new entertainment mode. We have a new UI and a whole lot more. So like I said, middle of July, definitely expect that. Now 0.8.6 brings the new map. So it's pretty cool to see that the mobile version has almost caught up with this update. It basically catches up to the desktop version, which has been out for like two years already. So it's insane how fast the mobile version is evolving. And I'm very excited for this map. I haven't played this map much. And I think I'm going to hold off on doing drop and loot location videos for this map until the global beta is released or the global version is released. Like I could do them right now. Obviously we have the map in English and I could do a video on the logging camp. I could do it on, you know, uh, boot camp Charlie. But I think that it's not going to mean as much as if I wait until the global version is released or at least the beta is released and you guys can experience it too and try out those locations and you're not just watching me play this because I know not that many of you play the Chinese version of the game. There are a ton more users on the global version. So let me know in the comments down below if you agree with that or if you want to see some drop locations now. I'm sure there are going to be probably like 20 drop location videos coming in the next few months just because there are a lot this is a very dense map this map is a lot smaller than uh, Miramar 
So Urangel and Miramar are eight by eight kilometer maps, which means that they're actually four times as big as this one. This one has much more the feel of Fortnite. So I don't want to, you know, I know there's a lot of passion between Fortnite and PUBG Mobile, but a game like Fortnite has a much smaller map, which pushes people together a lot quicker. And that's kind of what this map does. This map was designed to be the anti Miramar. So you have Urangel, which is a super balanced map. That's the original one, obviously the island one with the, uh, the military base and Malta and school and Pachinki and all that. That map is very balanced. It's a very fun map to play on. You've got hills, you've got fields, you've got forests, you have water, a little bit of everything. Miramar kind of changed that up. Miramar is a much bigger map. It's more of like a sniping oriented map. If you don't have a scope, you can definitely feel like outplayed in the first five minutes of the map. You can also go the entire, like the entire game without seeing anybody. Obviously you'll see a bot or two, but as far as real players, Miramar is, it plays a lot bigger because there is no, not as much water as on Urangel. So it just plays like a much larger map and it's, kind of boring for some people so this is the answer to that this plays a lot more intense there's still 100 people but the map is four times as small and there's a lot of water on it too i'm really super excited about this i know i'm kind of repeating myself but i can't wait for this map to come out to uh, play on it and just uh, share with you guys all the cool places and all the secret drop locations and all that so that's obviously the biggest change coming to 0.8.6 but there are some other changes too there's the new, I don't know what exactly happened there with the title there, but it should just say new features. So there's a new season archive feature, which allows you to view player statistics from previous seasons. So now because each season is roughly, I think like three months, right? Or is it two months? I'm going to probably get that wrong, but we started in June to July to August. I think it's two months, but this was a short one. So I think it's supposed to be three months. Anyways, if you want to view statistics from previous seasons for people you are friends with or your own statistics, you'll now be able to do that. There are two new vehicles for Sanhok. There's a bulletproof UAZ Jeep, which comes from a flare drop. So I'll talk about that later. And there's also the muscle car, which replaces the Dacia. So new map, obviously we have some new vehicles. We also have a new weapon the QBZ, which is an assault rifle. It uses 5.56. I believe it replaces the SCAR. It replaces the SCAR in the desktop version. I'm not sure on the mobile version yet, just because I haven't played this map much. Um, but the QBZ, I believe, is a Chinese assault rifle, and it's pretty good, and it's a world drop in Sanhok. So a ton of people are going to be playing with this rifle because it's very common to find there, and it's also very good. So I'm curious if they're going to nerf it eventually, or if this is just going to be like the meta for Sanhok is find dual QBZs, stick a scope on one of them, and then you're, you're set. They have a flare gun to signal a super airdrop. So if you find the flare gun, it looks like a little orange pistol. I'll definitely do a video on this. And basically, if you find it, it's a world drop, you shoot it into the air and it signals a super airdrop. A plane flies over, it drops a big crate, which has awesome stuff in it. Like I said, we'll have to see in video what exactly is in there because I haven't signaled one. But if you're inside the play zone, it signals a super cool crate. And if you're outside the play zone, it summons a UAZ, a bulletproof UAZ, which allows you to get back into the play zone. So it's an interesting game mechanic. It's kind of like a, if any, if you've played a Mario game before, they have like the star that makes Mario invincible and run faster and all that. This is kind of like that. It's kind of your catch up mechanic. So if you have this, you're down, you're you know way outside the zone, you're worried about not being able to make it in. Uh, you're worried about getting killed while you're driving in because you have to you know drive in at the end of the the zone where everybody sees you and it's just a cool mechanic i'm curious how it's going to rebalance the game and i'll definitely be playing some games on this map to uh, experience i'm pretty sure the flare gun is not sanhok exclusive so correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure this is just everywhere the qbz is only in sanhok as far as i know so i may have that wrong and i'll correct it if i do but like i said i just have to play this map and then i'll you know i'll, I'll be able to tell you more there's a duck bill muzzle for the uh, 
the 1897, uh, which is the pump shotgun, as well as the S12K, which reduces the vertical spread and increases horizontal. So instead of it being roughly a big circle as you get further away from the shotgun, now it's more like a rectangle. So this makes it a lot better for spraying people down when they're uh, close to you or even at medium range because basically you don't have to worry as much about missing vertically. So as long as you're aiming at body level, the spread horizontal ensures that you're going to hit them with shells or with uh, slugs or whatever pellets, whatever it shoots out. So I'm not really sure what sort of shotgun pellet it fires. But next we have a ton of optimizations and we have some interesting wording here. I'm not entirely sure what this is for the first one. Reduce the additive effect of the accessories on the lumbar spread. So I, I guess people's backs won't hurt as much when they pick stuff up now. Um, additive effect of the accessories on the lumbar spread. This also could be relating to like recoil of a weapon or something. I'm just not sure. And I don't want to really guess because I'm going to get it wrong. Uh, but we know that there's an optimization there that hopefully someone else can translate better. We also adjusted the range of the shotgun bullets. They'll now be more densely distributed. This means that shotguns will have a little more range. It means that's going to be tighter packed. So it's almost like the shotguns are starting out with a choke, I guess. Obviously, the choke is still going to exist, and that's going to further decrease the spread. But it sounds like shotguns will be uh, shooting tighter groupings. So bullets can now penetrate water and hit enemies underwater. This is awesome because there are a few times, especially in Watertown on Urangel, that if you get knocked out, you're actually under the water, but you can crawl around, and you're invincible, basically. So that's really annoying, and now you can actually shoot through the water and hit enemies there, but I'm pretty sure the penetration is very low and the damage isn't going to be great. But if somebody you know, gets knocked out, you can finish them off if they're underwater, or if somebody's swimming and they go underwater temporarily, uh, you have a shot, you, know, you have a chance to shoot them at least. So in real life, bolts do not travel through water very quickly, but I'd imagine that the damage is going to be low enough or the penetration through the water is going to be low enough that they're going to try to keep it fairly realistic. We also have the M24 sniper rifle, which will be removed from the airdrop, will be randomly placed around the map. They're going to decrease the damage, though. It's still better than a Car 98K, so this is definitely, and it can use an extended magazine, so this is definitely the sniper rifle, the new Car 98 almost, that you want to find as a world drop. Obviously, the AWM is going to stay crate only. It's going to be awesome because it is awesome and does a ton of damage. The damage from an AWM is 120, so you can see that this does obviously a a lot less but it still does more than the car 98 so this is the guy you want to find and i have a feeling that this is going to evolve the meta where instead of car 98s everybody's going to be going for m24s now and the negative effect of the light grip the light grip was the one that nobody really wanted to use because it kind of sucked um and instead now they have decreased the negative effect and now they are increasing shooting stability and recoil recovery so now more people are going to want to use this grip and instead of just seeing it and intentionally not picking it up which is not great you know you don't want any items in the game that are bad enough that nobody wants to pick them up that's just a bad you know bad mechanic there so They've also optimized the fire rebound performance of the assault rifle and the SMG. I believe, though, they have moved them in opposite directions. So the fire rebound performance is how the recoil is. And I believe in the SMGs, they decreased it to make SMGs more powerful in comparison. And assault rifles, they've increased it to make assault rifles worse in comparison. That's just because the assault rifles up until this update they're basically, I know that the 0.7.0 beta removes the ability to use an eight times, but you can still use a six times on them and they're still very good. And what a lot of people are doing, myself included, is you just find two ARs and those are your weapons for the game. Unless you find a sniper or unless you want to use like a DMR, like an MK14 or something, everybody's just like, oh yeah, I'm going to use a, you know, an M16 with a scope for range and then I'll use an AK for close with a compensator or whatever. So this is to try to get away from that. Obviously, ARs are very good rifles, but they shouldn't be so OP that people see a, see a Tommy gun or a UMP9 and they're just like, oh, that's junk compared to this AK I found in the closet, you know? So next they have optimizing the performance of the red dot sight in the eight time scope. This, I believe, is just relating to uh, device performance, so making them perform smoother. 
You also have the ability to replace the optical sight pattern and color for the red dot holographic and two times. And that is exciting. Um, I'll show you that in another video. You can change the color. So if you want like a triangle or a little, not triangle, a carrot or a circle or a single dot, you can now customize that to what you want to see. And you can also customize the color. So sensitivity for three times and six times scopes can now be adjusted. That was just an oversight. You couldn't adjust the sensitivity for those scopes, which was disappointing. During the six times and eight times scope zooming, now the sensitivity will be dynamically adjusted according to the sensitivity of the different multiples of the scope set by the player. So what that means is when you're using an eight times scope in four times mode, all right, and when you zoom out, you're going to be using your four times sensitivity. And this is what kept these scopes from being super useful. Like when I first heard that you could adjust a eight times between four and eight, I figured, oh, you only need that scope then. Why would you ever want to pick up a four times? And when I heard about the six times, which goes from a three to a six, I said, oh, why do you ever need a three times if you have a six times? Well, the problem was that the sensitivity was the uh, eight times scope sensitivity or the six times scope sensitivity. So basically what happened is when you were zoomed out, your sensitivity didn't change and it wasn't optimized for a zoomed out scope. So it was just easier to use a four times and then swap on the eight times, which you just left at eight times. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I'm excited to see this. It looks like a good direction to go in for sure. They've also optimized the zoom performance of the six and eight times scopes. That's another thing, just you know, smoothing out the performance on devices so that you don't get lag spikes or get drop frames and stuff while you're zooming in. They've also added the ability to view the list of spectators in a battle. So you can see who's spectating you. This isn't super useful, but it's, it's fun. It's good for tournaments because we'll be using spectators like moderators, making sure people aren't cheating and also to cast games and stuff. So it's good to see that in the game. And, uh, you know, that's an exciting new feature. We've got automatic picking settings. This is huge. This one should be bolded or in red or something because this is going to change the game, the mechanics so much. Basically your auto pickup is now going to be useful again. So auto pickup has always been decent. I still use it by default, but there are times where you're not getting the, the bullets you want, or you're getting too many med kits or too many first aid kits. You're filling up your inventory with stuff you don't need because you picked up an extended mag or you picked up a, a quick draw and now extendeds aren't showing up as yellow. What this does is it allows you to customize for each weapon, how much ammo you want if you have that weapon equipped, how much you want to automatically pick up, how many first aid kits you want to pick up, how many bandages, how many boost items. It just makes managing your inventory a lot better. So this is huge and I really think this is going to change the game mechanics. I'm going to do a video for sure on this feature because it's super important. Now players can also choose their own play strategy before matching to better match players. There are four choices and basically if you want to play and I'll Again, another video on this coming soon. But if you want to play a more defensive game, like if you want to get a vehicle, drive away from the, the zone, and then uh, you know loot up some rural places, you can select that. If you want to drop in a city and just fight right away, you can do that. If you want to uh, some, be somewhere in the middle, there are four different choices. And this is for when you're randomly matchmaking. So if you're playing with your friends, this isn't going to matter. If you're playing by yourself, just like solo, it's not going to matter. This is only when you're selecting random uh, teammates, when you have auto matching on. If you want to play an aggressive game, it will match you with people who also selected an aggressive game. I think this is a great change. And I'm excited to see how it's implemented because uh, I'm sure most of you have experience with random teammates where sometimes, you know, you're... You're the guy who wants to drop uh, somewhere semi-rural, loot up a few buildings, a compound maybe, and then you know work your way into the play zone. And then your random teammates drop school and drop, you know, and die in like 15 seconds. And you're like, all right, I guess I'm playing a solo game now. Um, or they take a car and then try to run you over, or grenade you later. So this should be better in um, matching people with like-minded people. So we'll see. We also have limited time clothing, which can now be decomposed, um, that can now be dismantled. And the reward for dismantling is BP. So now if you want to get rid of all those annoying crates, so if you have those crates that are like three day trial crates or seven day trial crates, 
and you really just want to get rid of them as I do, they're just taking up space. You can actually open them up, get those time limited clothes, and then trade those clothes in for BP. So it's good to see that you can now do something semi-useful with those things because I just have so many of them in my inventory and I'm just frustrated by the fact that time limited clothes are still a part of the game. That's just my opinion, but that's what I feel. They optimize the animation during decomposition. Now this could be when players die or it also could be when they are dismantling clothes. I'm going to guess that it's the dismantling clothes one just because of the uh, the uh, 15, the point right before this was talking about clothes. So we'll see though. Optimize the display of the backpack menu. Um, not entirely sure what that is. I'm assuming that it's going to have to do with inventory management in the game when you click on the backpack icon, but we'll see. They've also modified the UI to increase the image display of yourself and teammates. So now you'll be able to more easily see um, your teammates' health and their status and stuff like that. I'm, again, not entirely sure of every change there, just because I haven't played any team matches on this version yet. They've added the ability to throw apples on the spawn island. Oh, gosh. Okay, well... That's a thing. So it's uh it's better it's better than when they had all the weapons on the spawn island and everybody was like freaking out and just your ears were melting because everybody was just firing weapons everywhere. Uh now you can throw apples. So that that sounds fun enough and harmless. So cool. They've also added new gun skins. That's probably going to be for the introduction of the next season. So I don't think I ever mentioned when this update is going to be coming to global. It's most likely going to be coming August 18th or very close to it. And that's because one, it's a month after 0.7.0 is supposed to come out. And two, it's also when season two ends. And I'd imagine that they're going to want season two to end before Sanhok, the new map, comes out because that's going to uh, definitely change the dynamic. Some people are going to be really good at it. Some people are going to be awful. So obviously you don't have to play that map if you don't like it. But I'd imagine that this update will be coming out somewhere around the middle of August. So let's go ahead and take a look real quick at my calendar. Just going to pull this up off screen. And let's see if we can figure out. So the 18th is a Saturday. So I would bet that the update will probably come on the 20th of August then. That would be my guess. But obviously this is super far out. Don't commit that date to uh, memory and you know yell at me when I get it wrong. But that would be my guess, August 20th for this update. They've also added a new boot camp system. So you can see each one of these major releases has so much new stuff in it. It's ridiculous. Like I didn't expect this much. And I mean, this is quite a few updates in. If you remember where we were, just memory lane, you know, take you guys down memory lane for a couple seconds. Uh, back in 0.3.3, we didn't even have arcade mode. So for a while, you know, for a long time, actually, we only had one map. We, and it's not even that long ago, I guess, you know, in, in whatever, in game time, it's only like two and a half months, I think. But when I started making videos for this, which was when it was first released, the game was still pretty neat. It was still super cool, but there was no arcade mode. There was only one map. There were a lot of bugs. There were a lot of just, you know, there, so much has been added in such a short time. It's cool to see that even now this next update Again, like 7.0.7.0 uh, introduces a lot of stuff. 0.8.6 introduces even more stuff. So I'm excited to see where they go from here, where the next like 0.9.0 release goes because they've caught up to the desktop version. So anything they do from this point onward is going to be like beyond that. So, hey, maybe they'll start setting the... Um, the release dates or release schedule for the PC version then because you know they'll be introducing new weapons and potentially new maps and stuff and PC version won't even have it yet which is crazy so the new boot camp system let's get back to the new features or optimizations of 0.8.6 the Chinese version they have uh, new players who enter the game go through a boot camp and the rewards in the boot camp can be completed within seven days so this is finally an interactive tutorial of sorts that lets new players learn the game without getting frustrated with it. And existing players can also complete the bootcamp mission after launching the game and will receive rewards upon completion. So it's rewards for everybody, but it's really meant for new players who don't have experience with the game to be able to uh, learn their way around the game uh, without just reading the, you know, whatever it was, 30, 40 pages of that tutorial, which is cool, but it doesn't really tell you how to actually play. You have to play, you know, learn through playing, which 
can frustrate people. There are also some bug fixes. I think this is the end of this uh, video. We're coming up to the end of it. And oh my gosh, if you stayed with me till this point, congratulations, because this is quite the video. So they fixed a problem with some vehicles that are too prone to drifting in some parts of the map. I'd imagine that is in Miramar that they're talking about. <laughs> you probably experience it, get into a vehicle and just drifting around in the sand and not being able to do anything and just getting frustrated with it. So they fixed that. They've also fixed the problem where the UI is not refreshed in time. I'm guessing that might be the issue where you couldn't see your weapons and clothes and stuff in your inventory. They've also fixed the problem that playing in first person can cause you to see through walls. That's always a good problem to fix. Also fixed a problem where the range of movement in the character's field of view is limited. So maybe they made that a little smoother. Maybe that's relating to the free look tool, being able to look around you. That's obviously important. Fix the problem of abnormal jitter after Groza opens in some states. Okay, so uh, after the, that might be like a reload animation or it could be relating to the, um, the recoil pattern of the Groza. I'll have to test that out. But it doesn't sound like it's related to gameplay. It sounds like it's just like a cosmetic thing. Problem of abnormal jitter. Hmm. And they've also fixed other known issues, which, could be anything. So I think that is it. Yes, we have made it to the end of the presentation for 0.8.6, the new Chinese version. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you out, definitely give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends because that really helps me out, helps the channel out, and it keeps me making more of these videos. And if you wanna see a video on any of these features that I talked about today, definitely let me know in the comments down below. Gonna be making a lot of videos on the 0.7.0 beta, but I might try to squeeze one or two in the 0.8.6 version in too, just so you guys who are playing the Chinese version can feel included also. And if you're not subscribed already, now's a good time to mention again that subscribing and turning on those notifications is super important if you want to stay up to date with the latest in PUBG Mobile content because I promise that as soon as stuff is released, I will do my best to get it out to you guys without overloading you in videos either. So thank you again. My name's Derek G, and I hope to see you on the battlefield soon, either 0.6.1, 0.7.0 beta, or the new 0.8.6 Chinese version.